All right, hi, and welcome to a new FaceFX video tutorial. We're showing off FaceFX Studio 2012 and some of the new features. When you load up the Evolver sample content, the first thing you'll probably notice is that we have full body animations included. So you can see a walk cycle here uh, while the character's talking. My dear fellow, whom? That's a preview animation, uh, which was exported from Ogre when we exported the ogre.mesh and .skeleton file. So these animations are stored in the ogre.skeleton file, and we bring them up automatically here. And then you can trigger them uh, by setting them as the preview animation and optionally looping them. Um, so now you can edit your facial animations while you're playing an underlying body animation. We've got, in this example, face effects controlling the mouth, and we've got Ogre controlling the body. You can also trigger Ogre animations uh, from the event system. So in the next example, we've got an animation where he's going to play uh, a few ogre animations uh, as little snippets. Now this is a surprise, my darling. How are you? Here we've got the preview animation set out as just a single frame animation to get him to hold this pose. And then we've got small, other small uh, ogre gesture animations being triggered via the events tab. Um, so we've laid out these events uh, by hand. They have duration scale, magnitude scale, blend in and blend out values that we want to control how the animations look. And they trigger these animations, which uh, via the custom payload uh, will trigger the appropriate ogre animation. So you can actually have uh, an automated system where via text tags or the analysis text preprocessor or uh, an analysis actor, you can trigger ogre animations automatically if you like. Uh, once you have these uh, ogre animations, uh, the way you want them in the uh, correct places, you can always export the entire skeleton out via FBX. This is a no-save version, so export is disabled. Um, so that's the full body animation um, system that we've created. Uh, another one of the new features are the additional languages, Chinese and Czech, that we've added. So when I generate a new animation now, I can select a Chinese audio file. Uh, you can see a mixture of Chinese characters and English text. Um, if it, it defaults to English if the Chinese characters uh, aren't there. When I select the language, you can see Chinese Mandarin and Czech. Um, and we have created a full framework for creating additional languages. Uh, Czech was implemented in Python. Uh, Chinese was implemented largely with a dictionary. And you can see that uh, we've analyzed the Chinese characters here. Uh, we also have a Python GUI. Uh, so you can now script your own uh, GUIs from Python. So this tab here um, I'll close that out and just uh, relaunch it from the quick launch bar. Um, it's uh, created in Python and it shows up just like a tab in FaceFX Studio, uh, a rather ugly tab, but uh, still it's very helpful for your scripts to be able to have GUIs associated with them. This one lets you create bone poses uh, from whatever the uh, position the character is in. Uh, so I can create a bone pose uh, of that um, of what's in the screen, and I can also remove bones uh, from existing bone poses. Um, there's a lot of things you can do there to improve your scripting uh, now that you can have access to the WX Python uh, GUIs. Another new system that we like is the emoticon system. So if you look at the events that were in um, this sample animation, you'll notice this smiley event. Now an emoticon is defined as a series of one or more, or two or more um, punctuation characters. And we have a starting emoticon and a terminating emoticon that, de that determine the length of the emoticon animation that's generated. So by putting these two smiley characters into the text, we're going to create this smiley event that has the appropriate duration scale and start time um, for where it was in the text. And then we can do whatever we want from that emoticon event, uh, triggering whatever type of animation we'd like. For the smiley emoticon, it might make sense to have the character smile. And that's what we do here. You'll notice the 04 uh, basically lets us override the default value of 1 for the magnitude scale with a, a different value. Uh, and so that sets the magnitude scale to 0.4. So the emoticon is a very quick way, much quicker than older text tags as far as um, adding expression to your character uh, with some very simple text. Since there's a lot of information in uh, punctuation, we also include these phrase events, uh, periods, commas, uh, question marks, and exclamation points are treated differently than uh, typical emoticon characters, and we use them to delimitate phrases. And then we give you events uh, of the appropriate duration for those phrases. Uh, and you can use those to, let's say, uh, you know, raise the eyebrows uh, for a question when you see the question mark. 
Another <clears throat> new feature are, is phoneme funneling. If you're using the default mapping, uh, then your results will be smoother automatically uh, than they were in the last release. Uh, we had a Python script that would do phoneme funneling for you in FaceFX Studio 2010. Uh, that's been moved into C++ in 2012. Uh, if you like the older animations that had a, a slightly more active mouth, uh, you can always turn off that option uh, in a global console variable. And finally, we have some changes to the SDK, such as animation compression, where you can save over 60% of your animation data size uh, if you're loading your, game, your animations up in-game. And we have centralized animation set mounting and unmounting. So you can load up animations once, share them across a bunch of characters, and they've only been stored in memory once. Um, there's a lot of new features in FaceFX Studio 2012. Those are some of the more important ones. Uh, but we really hope you'll check out this version. Uh, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.